Hi, I'm Ruud van der Pas. I'm a mathematician, work as a senior staff engineer in the Developer Tools organization at Sun Microsystems. I'd like to welcome you to a seven module training series brought to you by Sun. It's called an introduction to parallel programming. The trend toward multi-core and parallelization is creating demand for new skills from software developers. In this series, we'll discuss parallel programming as one of the fundamentals of application development. Last time we discussed distributed memory and a message passing interface called MPI. Now, in module 6, we will look at programming for shared memory, automatic parallelization and OpenMP. In this module, I would like to talk about the shared memory programming model. In particular, automatic parallelization and OpenMP. With automatic parallelization that is supported on the Sun Studio compilers through the XAutoPar option, we get the compiler to do the analysis for us. It's a loop-based technique. The compiler will examine loops, could be nested loops, and try to find the parallelism. Once it has found the parallelism, it will create all the infrastructure for us. There's nothing we have to do. And what it will do at that loop level, it will assign different loop iterations to the various threads that we specify, and that's all we need to do. We tell the system how many threads we want to, do, to use, and the runtime system will handle the rest. That gives me one binary, one parallel binary, and I can run that on any number of threads that I like. And here's a simple example. I have a loop uh, calculating A equals B plus C. I do that in a loop structure with a thousand iterations. And the compiler will find this parallelism. And by the way, the number thousand can be an arbitrary program variable. It doesn't have to be a hard-coded number. Once I have the parallel binary, I set this environment variable, OMP num underscore threads, to four, for example, and if that loop is a thousand long at runtime, each thread will work on 250 iterations, and we get our parallelism executed at runtime. It's as easy as I'm showing here. Automatic parallelization is supported on the uh, Sun Studio C, C++, and Fortran compilers. It's, as I just said, loop-oriented. It could be loopnest. First, the compiler will optimize for serial performance, and then it will parallelize. And if you like, you can get diagnostics out of the compiler. We have two different ways of doing it. There's a compile option called xloopinfo that will give you immediate feedback on the screen. And there's a command called er underscore source that will analyze the object file and show you the messages. The recipe is shown on the slide. So here's a simple example. It implements the multiplication of a um, matrix with a vector. The matrix is stored in B, the vector is stored in C, and the final result will be stored in vector A. The code here implements the dot product approach. I can compute this, product, this matrix vector product by taking the dot products of the row of the matrix B times the vector C. And as I'm trying to show in this uh, little diagram, all these products can be executed in parallel. The pink one the computation of the pink element is independent of the computation of the yellow element. And that means I can execute them in parallel. In terms of my uh, loop nest, that means the outer loop, the loop over variable i, is the parallel loop. That one I can execute in parallel. Again, each will accumulate a dot product, and I can do that independently and store the result into variable a. I present that to the Sun compiler. I use the xAutoPar option and the loop info. These options will, first of all, invoke the automatic parallelization, and loop info will give me the messages as shown here. It tells me the loop at line 3, my 4i loop, has been parallelized. And again, the compiler does everything for me, and at runtime, this will execute in parallel. A great way to get started with parallelization on a shared memory system. But it could be roadblocks. And here I'm showing a loop a equals a plus b. But depending on the value of m, this could be a parallel loop or not. If m equals 0, this is a very, very parallel loop and is very easy to parallelize. If m would be 1 at runtime, I cannot execute this loop in parallel. So depending on what the compiler can find out about variable m, it may or may not be able to parallelize this loop. Because if you were the compiler, and you didn't have any information on M, you cannot parallelize this 
because if m was 1, for example, it would generate the wrong result. So this is where programmer help is always beneficial. And the programmer help can be provided through OpenMP. With OpenMP, you tell the compiler where the parallelism is. That's essentially the model of OpenMP. OpenMP is a shared memory model. You can run it on any system that has a single address space, ranging from a small laptop with multiple cores to a very big SMP or CC NUMA system. In contrast with MPI, there are now two types of memory. We have our threads or processes, and in addition to the local memory to a thread, there's a second pool of memory called the shared memory, and all communication takes place through the shared memory. You will find a lot of details on OpenMP on the website listed here, but I'm going to give you a kind of a flavor for what OpenMP is about in this presentation. The memory model is shown here. I have a pool of threads, and like with MPI, each thread has its own private memory, only accessible to that thread, but now I also have a shared memory pool, which I did not have in MPI. And all communication takes place through the shared memory. And everything is transparent. If a thread has a puts a variable into the shared memory pool, any other thread can access it. I don't have to worry about that. My worry is to put it in that shared memory pool, and then I know everybody can read and write it. So there's a lot of transparency in the OpenMP model. A lot of details are taken away and handled by the compiler and runtime system. The execution model is the following. When I start my OpenMP program, there's one thread that's always running. It's called the master thread. The master thread runs from start to finish. And at a certain point in what's called a parallel region in OpenMP terminology, the additional threads will be put to work. In this case, I have five threads active. In the parallel region, the master will participate in the work that needs to be done. So here I have five threads now executing in parallel. When I leave the parallel region, there's a synchronization. All threads will wait for the last one to arrive. And when the last thread has arrived, the master thread will continue execution until we hit the next parallel portion of work. This is called the fork and join model, and that's the model implemented in OpenMP. Here's another example. I have a, um, a loop, C equals A plus B, a very parallel loop. All I, all I need to get this to be executed in parallel is one pragma, the pragma OMP parallel 4. That will instruct the compiler that this is a parallel loop. It will tell the compiler you can distribute these iterations over the various threads. My responsibility is to identify this parallelism. I have to get it right. In this case, it's very easy. So all I need to do is put in that pragma and get the parallelism. I then have to tell the compiler this is an OpenMP program. I do that on the Sun compilers. I do that by specifying the X OpenMP option. I set the environment variable to the desired number of threads, in my case, five. I run, and this program will execute on five threads. And if that loop is a thousand long at runtime, here's how it will execute. Thread zero will execute the first two iterations. Thread one will execute the next set of iterations, and so forth. This is all handled by the runtime system, and it will give me the parallel parallelism that I was looking for. I could do the same example that I was showing with automatic parallelization, but now with OpenMP. And I've shown you the compiler will find it, but let's say I want to do it myself. It actually only takes one line of OpenMP, one pragma, pragma OMP parallel four. I prefer to use what is called the default none clause that forces me to think about my variables in terms of what is private and shared, where in the memory do I put it. Initially, that requires some thinking, but you'll find that it's not that hard, and it's good practice to do it that way. In order to illustrate why I made the choices shown here, let me show you how this will execute. <clears throat> if the loop is 10 long at runtime and I have two threads, one scenario could be that thread zero executes the first five iterations in parallel with thread one that will handle the other five iterations. So both will start executing for a different value of i. Well, if I would put i into the shared pool, there will be only one i, and each thread can modify it. That's not a good idea, because I want to separate them out in memory, and that's why I put i into the private memory 
uh, so there's no interference across the threads. I then compute my sum, and as the summation is implemented over the 4J loop, I also have to put J into the private memory because I don't want one thread to modify the J loop variable of another thread. They should be separated out, and that's why it's being declared to be in the private memory. Sum is the same because sum has a different value for the different threads executing, so I want to separate them out and put sum into the private memory. The arrays are shared because all threads have to be able to read B, read C, and when they are done, they have to be able to deposit their result into the various elements of A. So that's why I make them shared. For M and N, I have choices, I make them shared. There's other choices available, M and N. Making them shared is, works fine and there's nothing wrong with that. So that's why I did it that way. Once iteration zero and five are executed, I'll continue with one and six and so forth. This is how this program will be handled by the OpenMP runtime system. And again, all that I need is one pragma to achieve this parallelism. I'd like to finish with um, a little plug. I've been fortunate enough to be part of a book project. We wrote um, a fairly comprehensive book on OpenMP. The references are here. If you're interested in learning more about um, OpenMP, this could be a, a good way to get started. And uh, very recently, I've made all the examples, almost all the examples that are described and explained in the book on the um, www.openmp.org website. You don't have to buy the book for this. You can just go to the website, download those examples, study them, give them a try. And I would like to encourage feedback. So I've opened up a forum on this website so I can interact with you. And again, feedback is uh, very welcome. Thank you for watching. Please look at the other modules in this series. For more information on how Sun can help you designing parallel applications, please check the URL on the screen or send an email to the email address listed here. Thank you for watching and I would welcome your feedback. <laughs>